What's up guys, my name is Ralph and I'm going to do a tutorial on setting up DxTory for gameplay recording. I'm going to go over each one of these tabs here and explain what they do briefly and, and recommend some settings for you. On the top here you can see profile, so if you've ever like uh, started up a game and uh, with DxTory running, it will you know create a profile for that game. So you can have different settings for different games if you like. Alright, let's go with the first one, target information. Uh, ignore all that. It's all automatic stuff. You can ignore uh, specific targets, um, but we're not going to go over that because I never use it, so I have no recommended settings for this either. Next, we have overlay. Um, it's in the corner. You get a little counter of your frames per second, and it turns red when you start recording. So here you can actually pick a color. I picked this nice orange color. I can't remember what it was before, but I picked a nice orange color. It's an easier... Uh, easy to see out of the corner of my eye whether I'm recording or not. Very simple. You can also change the position uh, just by you know, moving your mouse everywhere on the screen and clicking. Very convenient. You can even have it you know, in the middle centers and corners and everything. Next we have folders. Uh, I recommend picking a folder that's on a different drive than your um, main drive where you're running your games off of because it's going to be writing to that drive the whole time and uh, it'll be better for performance if it's writing to a different drive, a different physical hard disk. So yeah, add a folder here for your video recording, and you can also have a different folder alternatively if you want for uh, screenshots. Next, my favorite, the hotkeys. Um, I only have two hotkeys set up. Uh, the single screenshot, which is I put it on the numpad star, and the start-stop movie capture on the numpad plus. The reason why I do that is the really easy to reach with my mouse without having to look for stuff. So yeah, that's that. Very easy. You can uh, set up a lot of other uh, screenshots like push to talk if you don't want to record your microphone all this time. Or the high speed screenshots which are pretty cool for uh, you know time lapses and stuff. But you can, yeah, you can just click on this and put in the damn key for whatever you want. Next we're going to get into the nitty gritty movie. Now, a lot of this you might not want to mess with, but uh, the video codec, for example, the DxTor video codec is actually pretty good, uh, but I've had, you know, sometimes some issues with uh, editing and stuff, so do some tests and pick one that's good. Um, I'm actually just going to put it back on the DxTor video codec and see if it works. Uh, frame rate, you can keep it at 30, or you can go higher if you like, and you can actually just type a number in if you want, but, you know, keep it at it at a decent, uh, correct number. Output right here, you can choose file output or direct show output or both. Direct show output, it lets you stream live and you can do that at the same time. Then we have file format AVI or raw cap. I recommend keeping out AVI options, including the mouse cursor. That depends on what game you're playing. For Factorio, for example, it is really useful to have the mouse cursor. Otherwise you don't know where I'm pointing. You just see, uh, nothing. But for other games um, where you are mainly, uh, you know, with a first-person shooter or something, you might not want to include the mouse cursor. That's up to you. Including overlay is, uh, you know, the number on the top left and stuff like that. Generally, I like to keep that off. Now, here's where the fun part is. Uh, this is where I think it is better than, you know, some alternatives like Fraps or Shadowplay. You can do scaling. So if you're on a 1080p monitor, and I don't want to record everything in 1080p, or even if it's a higher resolution, I can choose um, how how big I want the video file to be. So I want to record in 720p, so I put the height in 720 pixels, the width in 1280 pixels. Perhaps I think only lets you do full size and half size. So if you're at 1080p, you're either 1080p or half of that, which is 540, I guess. Um, and then there's you know clipping here and margin. Don't worry too much about that. This this is like cutting uh, edges off your video, and this is actually adding black area on the edges of your video. I think that should be done uh, left to the editing software after you're done recording. Next, another great feature, which I think sets it apart from other recording software. Um, the audio settings allow you to have multiple audio channels. So right here, I have one and two, two audio streams. So first off, I have the uh, my headphone, my earphones, which basically everything that I hear from my earphones is recorded into stream one. And then stream two, I have my microphone. So it records my, you know, game audio 
in one stream and the microphone in the separate stream. So I can later on when I'm editing it, I can adjust the volume of one or you know clean up the audio of the other, that kind of stuff. And you can add up to eight audio streams. So if you are a wizard, um, which I am not at this moment, but you, know, you could set it up that if you're having a um, Skype or something on with your friends while you're playing a game and talking, you could have a third stream for the Skype of your friends so you can adjust the volume for that independently as well. But like I said, I'm not a wizard. If you do figure this out, it's really cool and uh, you know get that done. Uh, you can also add the push to talk hotkey for that and adjust the volume individually or or for the microphone though which I think it just changes your microphone volume in Windows. All right, next up we have screenshots, which are you know basically screenshots. The clipping and margin is the same as um, in the video tab. I wouldn't worry much about that. You can always edit that later. The high speed screenshots and auto repeat screenshots are pretty cool for the time lapses. You know, so it's here it's uh, doing one screenshot every second until I turn it off again. The file format, PNG, JPEG, bitmap, PNG is generally pretty good and you can include your mouse cursor and overlay and also change the size to anything you want and i keep it on 100 percent because i like to have my screenshots at 100 percent edit them down later screenshots are not a big deal for size uh on the video side you want to maybe not record at your full resolution and scale it down later during editing because the file size gets crazy big uh, at 720p I think it's around a gigabyte per minute. So if you're recording 30 minutes, that's easily 30 gigabytes. All right, next up, advanced settings. I recommend don't touch all of this. I mean, you can look at stuff like processing threads. Like if you know a particular game uses like CPU zero and one a lot, then you can say, okay, I want the story to use some of the other CPUs more, um, that kind of stuff. I wouldn't really mess with this unless you know what it is. I don't have any recommended settings. My recommend recommended settings for all this is leave it off. Don't touch it. All right. Next up, we have global, uh, which is just the the apps settings. So uh, the print screen screenshot, you can disable that so that whenever you do a screenshot, you know you do your own screenshot. Checking for updates, small size icon, showing system tray, high taskbar, that kind of stuff. Don't have to worry about that so much. That's only just the app settings. And finally, in information, which just tells you if you're registered or not and that kind of stuff. All right, this has been it. Uh, thank you for watching. I do have one bonus tip. If you're recording video, I recommend keeping the HUD on large. I mean, you might have a high resolution monitor and prefer to keep it uh, as a small HUD. But remember, you're doing it for the people who are watching, not for yourself. So put the HUD on large. In Minecraft, this is really easy. I'm actually getting chased by zombies. In Minecraft, this is really easy. You go to options, uh, video settings, and GUI scale. Keep it on large. Auto, you could do that. That's kind of crazy. Uh, but you know, this, you wouldn't do that. You, I might like it because I have a nice big monitor, but large. Good for the viewers because they might be viewing it on smaller screens than what you are playing it on. And this is applicable for a lot of other games, unless you don't want the HUD to be in the way. Unless, you know, you think that for the viewer, it's better to have a small HUD. But generally, if the viewer is viewing it on a small device, you want to put a big HUD so they can see what you're talking about when you're playing the game. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please you know, give a rating, and I will see you guys later.